Thank you, preacher. The vote, I'm on the vote strong. I need some water, amen. I'm like Coulter said, got to have water to make steam, amen. Dr. Ellis, I want to say thank you. I know that was probably a message yesterday that those ones like that, you don't swing from the chandelier on adultery. You get quiet. You know why? Because it may not be people's dealing with it, but you're thinking about it. I told Miss Paula, I said, can you go back and watch that? And she did. And, and I said, you especially need to see that when Dr. Ellis got tore out the frame with Miss Ellis saying, I promise you. Then me and Miss Paula's back and forth on Messenger. I promise you, I promise you, amen. We getting all mushy. That's all right, ain't it, amen? And you get mushy with your wife. Come on, say amen right there. Take your Bibles this morning. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 41. Nothing like being thrown on the bus right off the bat, amen. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, it's all right. I'm always ready. I want to be ready. It's not just another outline. Don't want to ever do that, amen. How many of y'all went to prison and preached and you just had an outline and you just preached it anyway? And that wasn't what, what God wanted. Sometimes there's a time to be quiet. Sometimes there's a time to sit down, amen. But anyway, y'all look at me like calf looking at the new gate, but anyway. Genesis chapter 41, let's all stand if you would in reverence to reading God's word. I need to find me a place to put this, but it'll be all right. Amen. Genesis chapter 41 this morning. Watch what the word of God says. Verse number 50, well, 48. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt. And he laid up the food in the cities and the field of the uh, food of the field uh, which was round about every city laid he up in uh, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered the corn uh, as the sand of the sea very much uh, until he left numbering for it was without number. And Joseph, uh, and unto Joseph were born two sons uh, before the years of famine came, uh, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manassas, for God said, He hath made me to forget all my toil and my father and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were, enter, were ended, uh, and the seven years of dearth began to come. According as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in the land, but in the land of Egypt there was bread. How about that? Hey, in this world that we're living in, they steal some bread. Somebody help me right there, amen. Now, i got to read on or I'll get to preach them anyway. Watch this, verse 55. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he said to you do, and the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the, what's your Bible say? Storehouses. Joseph opened up all the storehouses. Y'all slow this morning, but that's all right. And so on the Egyptians. Uh, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all the countries came uh, into Egypt to Joseph to buy corn. Because that famine was sore in all the lands. Brother Leach, where are you at? Right there. Pray for us, brother. Yes. Amen. Yeah, you may be seated. I want you to notice something in verse 56. The Bible says the word there, storehouses. One of the meanings of the word storehouses 
means because. When I looked that word up, I thought, because, that just, that don't fit. That's just not, you know, I was looking for something else. Coulter, you ain't never heard this message, neither you, Brother Leach. Y'all think y'all know where I'm going, but you don't, amen. The reason I say that, I've been on Joseph for about two years. I can't help it, it's good stuff, amen. I like when you get on something, amen. It make you, it's, it's like a coon, or a coon dog getting on a trail, amen. Am I right about it? You remember that? But anyway, uh, man, you just keep after it till you get that coon, amen. But that word because, uh, uh, listen, but there, there was a famine, a sore famine in the land, and because of Joseph, a type of Jesus. Would you agree with me this morning? Joseph is the, one of the best pictures of Christ than any other person in the Old Testament, I believe, amen. Moses is, I understand it, Abraham at times, each one. But Joseph is the perfect type, but he's not Christ, I understand that. But it's a good lesson here. Because of Jesus, <laughs> because of the storehouses, people could live if they came to Joseph. They're dying. It's the dirt has come. We are there now. People are dying in the streets. Amen. I mean, listen, people are falling down, even our own people. Uh, uh, listen, whatever you want to say, you can say COVID ain't real. We found out it's very real. Amen. Uh, and you can really get it. It affects, It's funny how it affects different people different ways. But I'm telling you, we're in a place of famine. People are starving to death for something. Can I say this morning, God has still got the bread. Amen. Yeah. Oh, they steal bread. If we'll just get that bread out there. Amen. But listen, I'll get bogged down, preach two hours, and I'm not allowed to do that this morning. Amen. Yeah. But anyway, what I want to say, listen, uh, because he lives, I can live also. Amen. Yeah. Because he lives. And uh, not only that could they live, uh, but they can be fed from the storehouse. Not only could they be fed from the storehouse, uh, they could be filled from the storehouse. That might not be doing nothing for you, but it is me, amen. There's times I need some filling, amen. You know, we go to the gas station, stop, fill it up. And my mother-in-law, I love her. I love, let me, let me say, I love my mother-in-law. And I use her in a lot of illustrations and a lot of jokes, but I love, if it was not for my mother-in-law praying for me and Miss Paula, we probably wouldn't have got saved. I remember her laying it on me one time. She said, you need to get saved. I said, I'm already saved. She said, if you were saved, you wouldn't be acting like you do. Thank God for mom and laws like that, amen. But listen, my mom and law everywhere I go, Brother Napper, she'll say, how much is gas? I don't know. I don't care. As much as we travel, just pull in. As long as you got flavored creamer in the coffee, I'm going to stop in there. Amen. Amen. But anyway, what I'm saying, listen, uh, I, he'll fill you from the storehouse. Hey, hey, you can fellowship with Joseph because of the storehouse. Huh? How about that? We, we're going somewhere. Just hang on, amen. Uh, can I say... The storehouse was a type of grace. Yeah. Uh, I got hung up on these graces right here in Joseph's life. I got about 12 of them, amen. <laughs> 12 graces, amen. But anyway, uh, what I'm saying this morning, can I say grace is still amazing. Yeah. Uh, grace is still uh, uh, awesome. <laughs> I was told you're not supposed to use that word. Well, I don't care. What it, I'm, I'm comfortable. And we just got out of prison, amen. And we use those things. You shouldn't do that. I understand. We go to the homeless, don't we, brother? The first time I went about two weeks ago, man, I'm hooked. I'm like, man, how do y'all find? There's one there. There's one. Where? I don't see them. I didn't, didn't have an eye for them. But Brother Shoe does. Brother, he'll run them down. Him and Brother Key. Brother Key, I've done seen a long time ago. He'll jump out your van and go get them, Amen. Hey Amen. Listen, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to tell you is grace is still awesome. Uh, grace is to anybody. Amen. Hey grace is still able. Grace is still available. How about this? Grace is authentic and not synthetic. <laughs> hey Amen. Is that, I don't even know the meaning of some words, but it's, it's real, in other words. Hey Amen. Huh? Hey Amen. It's real. Grace is real. This is it not real? Sometimes we've got over the amazing grace of God. Amen. 
and we've got through. I don't want to ever get over it, amen. Uh, grace is still abounding, amen. Hey, with that thought in mind, let us look at this uh, abounding grace in this message I've titled, Joseph's Storehouses, uh, the Storehouse of Grace. The Storehouse of... Um, what I'm saying, men and women, what I'm saying, Rock of Ages, what do we need? What do we need more than anything? We need something from His storehouse. Amen. We still need the amazing grace of God. Amen. Boy, I feel the preach coming on now. Amen. Oh, I throw my leg on that pulpit, but I, this is so high I can't get it up there. Amen. Too early in the morning, not enough coffee. But anyway, number one, I want you to notice the storehouse itself. Verse 56 says, And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened up all the storehouses. Now, this is key. Don't forget this. Uh, sold unto the Egyptians, uh, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. Can I say, listen, uh, the storehouse itself, can I say there's corn in the storehouse? Amen. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Look at verse 49. And the Bible said, And Joseph gathered corn uh, as the sand of the sea, uh, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. He gathered the corn. I got to study on corn. I like the meaning of corn. Uh, corn means resurrection. Amen. Corn means life. Amen. Aren't you glad? Glory to God, he's still got life. Amen. Still got some of that zeal, the brother preached. Stone, amen. Uh, oh, I'm telling you this morning. Hey, they steal some corn in the storehouse. Amen. Hey, uh, steal some corn. They steal some corn. Amen. Life. How about this? In the storehouse, there, there's corn. There is a countless supply. Uh -huh. Amen. Very much. Look, he said, and Joseph gathered as a sand of the sea. Very much. Very much. God has not run out. Now, I want to say something. You new missionaries just come on. Uh, I'm just a wee bit envious of you, Brother Shoemate, Brother Coulter, and, and, and Brother Bushy. Man, y'all support in the time of COVID is out the roof. You done it. A coordinator's meeting come. It took me two years to even get a church to take me on. Uh, and then the two years before I ever got three, four, five years before I ever came to a coordinator's meeting. Somebody help me. Oh. Hey, man, listen. And everybody bragging about how good everybody, God's been to y'all. And here I am sitting here, Brother Napper. I'm like, I'm six years, seven years. This is a while back, hey, Amen. Into this thing, I still ain't fifty percent. What in the world? It does not matter. Just stay after it. Stay, go, stay going. Stay with God. They steal some corn in the car, in the storehouse. Amen. Uh, he still got enough. He has not run out. Amen. He will not run out. Amen. Boy, I feel God right there, don't you? There's a countless supply, very much, without number. Oh, listen, an earthly storehouse will run out. Y'all remember COVID when it started? I don't know about y'all, but in Mayberry, North Carolina, we went to the store and there's no toilet paper, amen. My wife said, I thought it was a, a nasal thing. Well, I'll leave that alone, amen. <laughs> you understand, amen. Hey, there was, let me say this. I went to this little store uh, before COVID, way before COVID, Brother Walter, and bought this big, y'all ever go to them secondhand? stores where somebody was talking about last night where they had a car wreck or a train wreck or a, a, a track and trailer wreck and they picked up the salvage stuff because the store don't want it. And they'll take it down to this salvage house and sell it. I bought this humongous brother Jeff box of toilet paper. So I thought I'm doing good. That stuff was no count. <laughs> I took it to Brother Napper's place up there, uh, the mission house we have up there in uh, PA. There's still some there, amen. Are you listening to me? I've got multiple rolls of that. So when the good stuff run out, hey, they steal some corn. I didn't mean to say it like that, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about, amen. Hey, let's leave some cob, amen. But anyway, I... I can't help it, amen. Hey, there's still enough. Hey, we didn't run out. We didn't like it, but there's still enough. I don't know where stuff comes from. It just comes, amen. Well, can I say there's a countless supply here? Grace, grace will never run out. <laughs> when I got saved by the good grace of God, it was grace that saved me. 
when I, I listen, when I, I got called to preach, it was grace that called me. Uh, even a, a year and a half ago, when I was laying in that hospital after being ripped open, it was the grace of God that carried me through that. Amen. The grace of God. Everybody else is complaining. I was wanting to be one of them doctor Ellis is going to witness there, but I'm going to win somebody to the Lord in the hospital. Nuh-uh, son, not me. I didn't get to be David. David, amen, I didn't have Daniel. I don't know what the doctor's name was. All I told him in the Baptist hospital, Wake Forest Baptist, I said, don't let some of these, uh, 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 these interns operate on me. He said, well, we have to let them in there. They can look, but they can't touch. Amen. <laughs> you get what I'm saying after a while, amen. They can look inside my chest, but don't be showing me... Don't be touching my heart. You do all the work, amen. Huh? But I needed grace to get through that, amen. Oh, can I say this? Uh, how about this? The storehouse of itself. Sometimes we get our eyes on the corn. Sometimes we get our eyes on uh, uh, the countless supply, but never forget there's a corn giver. <laughs> amen. There's a corn giver, amen. And his name is Joseph, amen. Verse 55, watch what it said. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph. All you got to do is go to Joseph. Go to Jesus, amen. <laughs> Another one sitting right here, Miss Sarah, man. We just get her to come to a meeting and she gets support out of it, amen. <laughs> Preachers are climbing over the pews saying, Who, who's, uh, who's the lady with Rock of Ages? We want her to come to our church and present, man. It just, you know, I'm, right, I'm telling the truth, amen. And I'm like, I've been preaching for y'all for years and y'all ain't took me on, Amen. <laughs> But there's still corn. Come on. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Uh, amen. Hey, listen. Uh, the corn giver. Hey, the, to get the corn, to get life, you have to go through somebody. Amen. Uh, uh, he'll not turn you away. Uh, there's not been a time he's turned me down, Brother Walter. There's not been a time, Brother, uh, uh, that's, that, that, that he's ever said, I ain't got enough. Or hang on a minute. Let me take care of Brother Roth first, and then I'll get to you. No, my God can take care of everybody's need. Amen. Uh, oh, yeah, he'll take care of you. 16,000 crayons, you got a big daddy, amen. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. I got a big God, amen. What do you need this morning? Hey, can I say he'll give it to you? Somebody help me right there, amen. I said he's got it, but we just don't go to him, amen. We forget sometimes to pray. We forget sometimes it's God that gives us. Hey, yesterday I did it, went away from a, How many times we go away from a meeting like yesterday? Day, and we forget about what we've been taught and trained and heard well let me say it this way I went away praying was praying praying for things I know to pray for things I was looking for a white shirt yesterday time was short I, I need a white shirt the one I got now I've gained weight and I can't fit in it amen I'm not going to come up here with my belly hanging out. Amen. That'd be ugly. Say amen right there. Amen. I needed a white shirt. And I said, Lord, I, need... I go to one place. Man, it's out the roof. $60. I just can't bring myself to pay $60 for a dress shirt. Amen. Oh, preacher, I would. You can, but I'm not. Amen. I like them stores where they got them for 20 bucks. Amen. And I found one. I prayed and I found one. Amen. I said, my God's got it. Amen. We just don't ask for it. So there's the storehouse. Can I say this this morning? Oh, listen, uh, listen, uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Can I say this right here? We've seen there that uh, 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 the Egyptians came and bought. And there's something that sticks out to me about this. Uh, you remember the next chapter, and we'll get in that in just a minute. Joseph's brethren came to buy corn. But there's something about that. I ain't got time to go in it that I read. Uh, uh, when, he, when they bought the corn, and you'll see it in just a minute. When they came to buy corn, Brother Gregory, uh, listen, he didn't let them buy it. He gave their money back to them. Can I say God's children don't have to buy what God's got? Amen. Egypt's paying a fortune for love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, all the nine fruit, amen, nine of the fruit of the Spirit, amen. They're paying for that, and they're wanting that, and we get it for free. <laughs> We got it for... Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying, amen. Y'all look like a bunch of Baptists this morning. I said we get it for free, amen. I, can I say our heavenly Joseph will give it to us, amen. All you got to do is ask, amen. All you need uh, uh, well, all you need is the storehouse of grace. Number two, I want you to notice the sack they brought to the storehouse. Look at verse 40, uh, chapter 42, verse number two. And the Bible said, and 
He said, Behold, I have bread. No, I'm sorry. I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get ye down thither and buy for us thence uh, that we may live and not die. He said, jo Jacob said, I heard there's corn. You remember the first time you got, uh, uh, you heard about Jesus, you heard there's corn, but you didn't believe. Amen. You had to go see it for yourself. Are you with me? Just hang on. We're going somewhere. I'm trying to do the boat, but I can't help but I got to preach. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, they had to come. Listen, that sack, uh, his father told, in other words, they had to come to the end of themselves. You know what COVID's done for us? Showed us God's real. A little old speck. A speck stopped the world. Now say it's a good spirit. Say what you want. Say what you want. I don't know about you, but uh, it's helped my prayer life. It's helped my... Uh, look, Lord, the small things, as brother does, them insignificant things we think nothing of. Man, I'm telling you what. And now we're reaping that. Go to the store now. You can't find nothing because where they shut down about two, three months back yonder, nobody worked, amen. Now we're running out of stuff, amen. Am I right about it, amen? Hey, but what COVID's done is made us realize we have to come to the end of ourselves before we'll ever go to the storehouse, amen. Uh, hey man, that's right, that's right. Hey, the sack, watch this now. Can I say he put more in them that they needed? Look at chapter 42, verse 25. And Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn. There it is. Fill their sacks with corn and restore every man his uh, man's money into his sack and to give them provisions for the way. And thus did he unto them. He put more in them. How many times he put more in you? <laughs> he put a whole lot in me, amen. Grace has got, I'm a bodybuilder and he's got a lot invested in this one. Say amen right there. You get that after a while, amen. Some of y'all ain't liking that, but that's all right, amen. Hey, hey, listen, uh, he'll put more in you than you need, amen. Oh, listen, Grace, uh, I'll put more in you than you've ever thought you could handle, amen. How about this? It put more on them than they were used to. Chapter 43, verse 23. Preached on this at the, the Blitz down in Alabama about Joseph's camp um, 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 donkeys there. But verse 23 says, And he said, Peace be unto you, fear not for God, for your God and the God of your Father hath given you treasures in your sack. Treasures in your sack. How about this? Look at 44. Verse 1 and 2, chapter 44. And he commanded the steward of the house, saying, Fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry. Put every man's money in his sack mouth. And put my cup, the silver cup, in his sack's mouth. You see, there's a progression there. He put corn. He put money. Then he put silver. That silver cup, that's a whole other message there. But that that you didn't expect, that that you can't explain. Ain't you ever went and preached somewhere for somebody and they didn't do you exactly right. The love off from what you didn't think it should have been or wasn't nothing. And you're driving down the road. Now you got to go to praying. God, I ain't got enough money to get home. So, but some dear old saint went by that loved you in that church, shook your hand, amen, or stuck something in your coat pocket and you pull it out. And that one thing that that little old widow woman, amen, go to God give you was more than that church. Amen. Oh, listen, can I say, listen, oh, listen, he'll put more on you than you're used to. Can I say, God ain't never done nothing but put more on me than I'm used to. God wants to advance you. God wants to bring you to another level. God wants to take you to places you ain't never been. We always preach about sin or take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, make you pay more than you want to pay. But on the flip side of that, grace will take you more of places you ain't never been. Somebody help me right there. Hey, grace will do stuff for you. Good God Almighty, that ain't never nobody done for you. Amen. Somebody help me right there. Amen. Yes, the grace of God. Amen. I'm talking about going to the storehouse this morning. I'm talking about he's got it. Amen. He can open the prisons. He can get you support, amen. He can get you in avenues you never thought you'd be down, amen. Uh -huh. Mr. Northeast Director, 30 years ago, you never thought you'd be that, did you? Still 
thinking he's not, huh? How about it, Mr. For West Virginia there, Ira Holland, schools in the school system. How about the rest of you, amen? Brother Jacob Olson, you ever think God puts you where you at, amen? And God, Brother Kendall McCracken, one of the loudest ones we've got. We pick about that, but we're envious because we want that thundering voice, amen. But I ain't got it, amen. You say, yeah, you do. Well, I wish I had the stamina. But you know what I'm talking about, amen. Mr. David Roth, North America director, did you ever think 30 years ago, you'd have run, man, you'd have, you'd have. Amen. Am I right? Somebody help me right there. You never thought, Dustin, you never thought that you'd be here, did you? Did you ever think you'd be pastoring a church? And I've heard of some of the people that you're pastoring, amen. I didn't know Jason McNeese's daddy goes here, amen. I mean, you're pastoring men of God. Is, man, that's awesome. Are you hearing me, amen? Brother Michael Adams, amen. What God is doing. Hey, somebody help me right there. Grace. Uh, the storehouse of grace, amen. Huh. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta go, amen. Listen, what I'm saying, he'll put more ahead of you than you're used to. He give them a sack, chapter 45, verse 21. I'm not going to read it. He give them the wagons to go get daddy. <laughs> the wagons of grace, amen. Wagons of grace will carry you, amen. Wagons of grace will care for you. I always wonder why. Why did he send them wagons? Uh, I'll tell you why. And he didn't believe until he saw the wagons. Uh, maybe the wagons came uh, and they had big letters on it, big bold letters. Uh, came from Joseph, amen. You know what I'm talking about. You know when grace showed up. You know when God gave you the grace of God. Uh, when you got saved. Uh, you know when God gave you grace when you was in a need. Uh, I mean, it was in big letters. Uh, and God was showing up and God I was showing out and he said it's me it's me i done that amen hallelujah to god amen it's the lord that'll help you amen mm. then the land let's go to 47 verse 4 i got just a minute or two i'm looking at that clock right amen watch this chapter 47 verse number four and they said more over to Pharaoh, for to sojourn in the land we are come, and thy servants have no pasture for thy flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Good my I just got to realizing and studying on this, Michael Adams, what Goshen was. Goshen wasn't in Egypt. And Goshen wasn't in Canaan. I'm about to have a fit right here. We're not of the world, but we ain't in heaven either. I'm living in Goshen. Amen. You say, preacher, what is Goshen? <laughs> i tell you what Goshen is. Well, let's get on here. Amen. I'm talking about number three, the security of the storehouse. There's some security in his storehouse. All because they went that first time. All because you went to Jesus the first time and you got saved. God ain't let you down. God's not going to let you down. He's brought us thus far so far already and he will not let us down. Amen. He's going to take us all the way to glory. Amen. <laughs> yes, we act like we ain't going, <laughs> but we're going. <laughs> Brother McKinney, we're going, and you get to sing when we get there. Amen. <laughs> ain't that grace? Amen. <laughs> I know we pick about that, but uh, brother, I'd like to hear you sing sometime, if you can or whatever. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Am I right about? It? Hey, listen to security of the house, uh, of the storehouse, because they went to Joseph. Look at forty-seven, verse number eleven. I'm almost done. What is? And Joseph placed his father and his brethren, gave them provisions of the land of Egypt. The best of the land. That's what Goshen means, the best. The best of the land, amen. The best of the land. Brother Peter, Peter she's talking about where you come from. I came out of a ditch, amen. I run equipment all my life. I worked in sewers and uh, done commercial sewers and all that stuff. Well, I came out of a mess, amen. Come out of the dirt. Now God's dressed me up and let me stand before people and pronounce his word and to preach his word. I was preaching back when I was 20 foot in the ground in the manhole. They put me in there. They thought they'd get rid of me, Brother Key. They said, let's shut this preacher up. I got down there and I got to felt like Jeremiah and I got to singing, amen. I got to singing down in that hole uh, there, Hunter. I got to singing about the grace of God. I said, God, you lifted out Jeremiah. This ain't what Jeremiah's in. And I got to singing, amen. Once I wandered in sin's black night and there was, I can't sing it this morning, but there's no way I can make my wrongs white. Then that old accuser to the Lord did cry. I got to singing and I found out Monday morning that noise 
travels up pipes three, four hundred foot. <laughs> and they had to turn the machines off. They thought something was rattling in the machine. They didn't thought their caterpillars blowed up, amen. It wasn't blowed up. I was down in that pit. I was down in that manhole singing and preaching, amen. Having myself a fit, amen. Me and God, y'all know what I'm talking about. How many times you went down the road and God got in a car with you, amen. And it got cloudy. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost showed up. I say amen. I say amen to the storm. Hey, <laughs> He's got the storehouse. He'll place you <laughs> where he wants you. Place means to settle and to set. Can I take this to little Libby right here? I'll be honest with y'all, and please forgive me. Y'all going to not like me for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I got a call from Dr. Ellis one time. He said, are you going to pastor or are you going to be a missionary? Basically. I run from missionary. I, I tried for four or five years to go back to pastor, Brother Napper. I'm not trying to be mean. Y'all y'all look at me like a cat. Y'all know some of y'all done it too. Boy, it'd be nice to have a congregation that loves you and take care of you. And y'all, Miss Paula, she's like, well, why can't we, you know, oh, it's getting quiet now. I've done steps somewhere. Whew. I finally made my mind up. Because I'll be honest with y'all, sometimes I just didn't fit in with some of y'all. Sometimes I didn't fit here and there. and I, I didn't, yeah, I fit now, don't I? Amen. <laughs> but not until I got to the land of Goshen and I sat down and I settled down. And I said, God, I'm not moving until you say move. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not going anywhere. Somebody called me the other day and said, Preacher, there's a church down in North Carolina. I need a pastor. I said, I ain't interested. Click. <laughs> Why not? I thought you was praying about it. I said, quit praying about it. I'm where I'm supposed to be right now, and I'm going to stay for a while. <laughs> Somebody, hey, hey, listen, it don't matter. COVID, whatever. Hey, listen, stay where God, where grace places you. Amen. How about this? There's provisions. He took care of them. How about this? Them provisions. Everybody else. Now watch this. Watch this word right here. Because i got to tie it in. Watch this word right here. Verse 13. And there was no bread at all in the land, and the famine was very sore. So that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted. Do you know what that word fainted means? To burn. Because they didn't have grace. They was burning. You ain't got grace, you're going to hell. You ain't got grace. You won't make it through this trouble sometimes we're in. What do you need? What do you need this morning? When we started Rock of Ages, nobody took me on. It took a while. Just had started. Had to go back to work. Some of y'all know my story. To, uh, 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 Brother Ellison, all them, Brother Napper does. Just came back from pastoring, tore all the pieces, busted up. I mean, we was bitter. We was upset. Didn't know which way we was going. Started Rock of Ages. Here we go. None of my friends, none of my home churches took me on. I had to go back to work. I had to work a little bit longer than some did. Two years longer than what was supposed to. But I remember Christmas time coming around. You fall out if you don't to. Whatever. Fall out, fall on. You try to tell your three-and-a-half-year-old boy he ain't getting nothing for Christmas. You try to tell your 13-year-old, ain't no money. We just had moved into our house, renting a house, and I thought, oh, God, what have I done can I say I went to praying and God opened this storehouse Amen. somebody called me they said preacher where are you at December 24th I'm at Walmart that's not a good thing I mean no that's not a good thing y'all didn't hear what date December 24th Christmas. I know y'all don't celebrate Christmas that's alright whatever y'all do amen but anyway uh, uh, listen uh, and where's our brother Leach and they said where are you at I said well I've got a few dollars to spend I'm going to buy what I can they said, listen, we got a check for you. They brought me a check. It's enough to buy some Christmas for my youngins. And then Jordan told me, he said, Daddy, whatever you do, he's 13 years old at this time. He's 26 now. Pray for him. He's not in the Lord's will. He, he said, Daddy, whatever you do, make sure Jonah gets something for Christmas. That's character. And then I thought, oh, God, there's Mama. I'd like to get her something. One more phone call came. Somebody said, where are you at? I said, well, I'm at Cato's. I don't know why I'm looking around. I don't know why I'm at Cato's. I ain't got no money. 
They said, let me come see you. And they put in my hand enough money to buy mama Christmas. Can I say unto you, that was the best Christmas that we ever had. Because of the storehouse. It was grace. Now you can sit there like a knot on the log if you want to. But everybody in here has got a need this morning. What do you need this morning? What do you need from the storehouse of grace?